Here. <laughs> it's one of those Hi. days. Technical difficulties. It's always fun. Welcome to Indie Entertainment. Oh my God. Happy Sunday and the day after Cinco de Mayo. Woo! I think that's the problem. Everything's like, it was Cinco de Mayo yesterday. Let's just take a shit. And the, the last <laughs> day after the day after the supermoon. That's what um, it is. It's all this rent. See, you saw me turn off the light. Nobody knew why I was narrating. Couldn't hear anything. Internet Explorer hates me. Um, I don't know what my wee top is having problems. Here we go. But one thing I will say, apologize for that. We had no, we had this great camera last week. We looked funky because the software wasn't loaded yet for it. But um, yeah, apparently after loading the software, it kind of caused a problem with Vid Blaster. So we're gonna have to figure that one out. So we're back to the other cam. I'm not sure if you can tell. It's a little darker. This is why we need an Indiegogo campaign. Then Seriously, I would like it to be. All of your donations would be greatly appreciated. We are desperate for better equipment. I'm going to do weird things right now. Because she doesn't always do new th the weird things. You know what I mean? Really? Because, come on. It's Amanda here. <laughs> hey. I had a pretty purple color in there, and now I'm stuck with green. Hold on. Get the pretty purple color back. Get the pretty purple okay, color Okay, here we go. So do we have it? I haven't moved it over yet. Give me a second. So yeah, she always does weird things. Did you guys see the standard action opening and did you have sound? I hope so. No, they had sound. Yes. They had sound. They had sound. We it didn't. was really awesome that, that uh, the guys from standard action did that for us at Vancouver Fan Expo two weeks ago. 
and we are going to have another interview for you today. Last week we did Ivan Hayden from Divine the Series, and today it's Georgie DeBoros from Hitman 101. He is the star of Hitman 101. We also have... Um, this is what you call editing on the fly. Three trailers for you guys. Uh, a sneak peek for the new episode of Breaking Point, and oh, a new segment yeah, I am Nate. of Sorry. the show. Yes, you heard <laughs> that right. A, a new, new segment. segment. So, um, can you throw up the standard action thing again, just in case? No, they heard it. We they, we got that good. Okay, sweet. We got that good. Um, Tonight, for those of you who have been asking due to technical difficulties, we have not put up the Ivan Hayden interview yet. It will go up tonight. So that those of you who want to rewatch it and see his handsome that face once weird. again, representing the space weird. very, very well, you will be able to do that. Reloading. What an interesting week it has been. Oh, yes. Um, there's a ton of stuff going on in the space right now with the new fronts which we talked about before there was a fascinating discussion going on on the IWTV Facebook today and um, let me explain why it's interesting because it is once again about um, monetizing the space and how long indie creators can hold out in a space where the money has not quite started to trickle down to truly indie creators yet um, which we can attest to mm -hmm. um, and how long creators can afford to stay in this space before you just have to stop. And I think that is an intensely... We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. <laughs> is that part... But I thought that was part of our thing. You can't talk it about is, it, it is. unless you so want it So we're going to talk a bit about that today. Um, but it's been an interesting week because there's been a lot going on. I've been watching a lot of new trailers, checked out a lot of stuff for new shows, played a lot of video games. As you guys know, we are in pre-production for our very first web series. And I want to announce today, although I don't see the person who uh, contributed this in the chat room, I'm sure when she hears about this or sees it go up on uh, YouTube, she's going to be thrilled. But we have a name for our upcoming web series. Yes, we do. Yeah? Yeah. And we are very, very excited to share it with you guys today. Um, we are in pre-production on the show. We're not sure exactly yet when we're going to hit the road, but as part of our pre-production, we are looking for sponsors to help. We are hoping to run an Indiegogo campaign, uh, and a lot of stuff is going into getting getting ready. The motorhome has actually been picked up by a mechanic and taken to a shop and is being looked at. So keep your fingers crossed that nothing major is wrong with our old motorhome that we bought. It's very cool. I think it's going to fit in with the web series great. But are we, should we share the name? Yeah. We should? Do you all want to hear the name? We should. The name of the show will be Indie Interstate, A Love Letter to America. I didn't make a graphic for that. I'm sorry. She did because you didn't know we were going to announce it today. I'm sorry. <laughs> I worked really hard. But that's today. what it's going to be called, Indie Interstate, A Love Letter to America. And the Indie Interstate part of the title was actually given to us or suggested to us in the chat room during the podcast last week by Venice Riley. So thank you, Brenda White, for that. And uh, she'll have a permanent spot in the credits. Yes. For that. A Love Letter to America. Indie Interstate, A Love Letter to America. Because it is going to be a cross-country um, documentary web series as we go from the Pacific Northwest to the Southeast to Florida and the people that we meet and see along the way, the things we see, the hijinks on the trip. But the reason we're calling it a love letter to America is, is this, and I want to explain this to you guys real quick. It's that when we took this same drive in October, last October, after the Geek Girl convention in Seattle, we left from Seattle and we drove to Florida and we saw a lot of things that were really interesting and we didn't take the trip prepared to really film anything we took a lot of pictures but we didn't we didn't really go that go down there to film it was more of a, a vacation and, and prep work and we got down there and as we got closer and closer to the south we we saw a lot of towns devastated by the economy where you would kind of drive through the town 
and there was nothing left. Everything was boarded up. Houses were abandoned and falling apart. There was maybe one gas station left or no gas stations. There was like one little general store left in a town and no other people. And you'd see, you know, like the lonely guy sitting outside by himself. And, and what we thought after we finished the trip is that wouldn't it have been interesting and, and really good storytelling if we could have stopped, which we intend to do this time and, and where this came from, and, and approach people and say, what happened to your town? And why did you choose to stay? Why did you choose to stay here in a town in the middle of nowhere when there are no services for 20 miles or more? Yeah. You know, there are just country back roads. There's no gas stations. There's no grocery stores. There's no, or there's, no real services. The only gas station within, you know, 800 miles or something in four different directions. And the person who lives there is the the guy who's you know got the house that's attached to the gas station because that's the only. But the gas station itself is closed, right? And and it's interesting. Plus, you meet a lot of really interesting people at at rest areas and and roadside stands, and everybody has a story. And we felt like we really neglected the most interesting part of our trip last time and not finding out what those stories were and sharing them with all of you. So that's what Indy Interstate is going to be. We're going to be taking the trip, but we're going to be finding out about those stories along the way. The stories about the towns that the economy has forgotten. The stories about the areas that have changed, perhaps permanently, because of whatever. And then, of course, the hijinks of taking three cats, a dog, and three adults in a 34-foot, 30-year-old motorhome across country in the middle of the summer. So, <laughs> thanks, Dan. I love your vote of confidence there. That's another thing. Our trip should only take about two weeks. So, <laughs> if you see a show one day and then there's not a show for like two or three days, maybe. But a lot of week, this, we're going to try to call. upload videos every day. Yeah, um, please rub your hand I'm over sorry. the mic, <laughs> can you? But a lot of it, a lot of it's going to be um, interesting for us. Because there's a time that, that we may never get back to again, you know, and things may have permanently changed for a lot of people. And I'm curious why some people would stay or go or what happened or why there's a giant ball of twine or why there's somebody whose yards is full, yard is full of statuary. Well, it also helps that we have, we're going to get Weird USA and sort of highlight things that we can we pass We actually on have the, already bought Weird USA. Weird Washington, not Weird USA. I have Weird USA. Oh, you do? I have Weird oh. USA. Oh, fun. But it's going to be interesting. I think it'll be fun. I hope it'll be fun for all of you, and you'll hear more about it um, coming up. So what should we do now? That's up to you. Me? Well, do you want to do a really big interview, or do you want to do, I don't know, crazy things? Do you want to? I think to we should show... Um, I think we should show you a preview for the upcoming episode of Breaking Point is what I think we should show you. And Gift of Amber, this one's for you. Although you've probably already seen it. Um, this is a sneak peek of the upcoming episode in the second season of Breaking Point. Check it out. I don't know why you can't just pick out the colors yourself. Your expression when you saw the green I was using, maybe? If I have to redo something that you don't like, it's only going to extend the process. Guess I can survive one torturous afternoon. It's not a zombie apocalypse, it's a paint store. Uh-uh, I'm driving. Well, I am a good driver. I haven't been in an accident since I was 16, okay? You drive too fast and you're reckless. We can take your car, but I'm driving keys, please. I'd like to get there before Tuesday. Whatever, flash lightning. I can get my own door. Well, let's get a move on, Grandma. Oop, forgot my card. Be right back. Okay. Hello, James. should be so lucky.
right. They're getting coffee. That can never be good. I don't know. Kidding. Oh, Cinco de Mayo. You realize that can never be good. <laughs> I think everyone. Your ex-girlfriend's messages from her phone, no matter who they're through, can never, ever, ever be a good thing. We saw that happen on The Good Wife. I know. Remember? That, and that was a voicemail. That wasn't even. But yeah. I don't want to turn it to sound a little bit soft for some people. Um, I will say this though, Tori and Crystal have fantastic chemistry. They yeah. do really work well together. I think. I think so too. And I don't. I don't. People are getting popping and hissing sounds. I'm not sure. And and if you're not listening with headphones, it might be really soft. It might also be because we're adjusting levels. Mm-hmm. Um, to try and get. It's mostly that. Well, it, the message gift of Amber was from her ex husband, but it's her ex girlfriend who is deleting it. Both of them technically excess. Since I don't think Tori and, and Crystal have gotten back together again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, I think they're I think they're taking a trip because of or or you know, like they said, it's just an art store or thing. I think they're it has something to do with someone else's business and because they're still kind of working together they have to be professional. Yeah, we but Crystal that. wasn't happy about it. Right. Tori was. She deleted the thing. And I don't think that I don't think that Crystal is wanting to get back together with her ex-husband. Maybe she is, but it's not because she really wants to. I think it's just a comfort thing. I don't know. I don't know what Karen's going to say. I don't know what's happening, but I'm glad the sneak preview was Crystal. Weren't you? Yes. Okay. Um, I think the next thing we want to talk a little bit about. A little bit about. Um, I'm losing my <laughs> mind today. Is the uh, we have a great interview with the Hitman 101 star Georgie DeBurris. Now you'll have to forget. How's the sound? On great. It? The sound is good. We um, interviewed him from the floor of Vancouver Fan Expo. But we used the Zoom, so it's. But fine. we did have uh, secondary digital audio. So through the magic of editing and digital electronics <laughs> and flashy things. The magic and internet dust of uh, post production. <laughs> we can show you this with really good sound. I think it's a fantastic interview because he really sounds passionate. Mm -hmm. And when you spend some time with these indie creators, especially those who are creating outside of the hub cities of LA, New York, and let me say this I don't believe that there is necessarily a huge detrimental LA bubble or New York bubble. I think it does exist, I think it skews perspective. Sometimes for the people within the bubble, I think most know this. Um, but when you spend some time with creators who are outside of those two geographic areas, you, you start to really pick up on what their individual needs are as creators, what their concerns are as creators being away from those support systems, and the passion that keeps them going when there's really not a whole lot of money trickling down you think it's hard to get money to trickle down for those of you who are in LA and New York from the higher ups in the entertainment industry try getting that money to trickle all the way to Canada or to trickle to Ohio or to trickle to uh, Largo Florida or Germany or Poland or Italy from those places people have to do it within their own countries and the IWTV is just now really starting to get to a point, a turning point in the existence where, where we as a group can do this. And it, it, it really is interesting because the passion level from some of these independent creators outside of those geographic areas is really amazing and it's refreshing because, I don't know, it just seems different to us in a way. Like you saw a lot of that with Ivan Hayden last week. You're going to see a lot of it with Georgia DeBoris this week. And it's not that I don't think every creator has a passion for this space, because I do. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in it. This is not Hollywood in the web series world. It is not traditional TV. It is not Hollywood. It is indie creators creating for the love of making something and the interaction with their audience. But I don't know. There was something about that fan expo that really mm -hmm. lent itself over to an excitement and a passion that you don't often see. Because people tend to get jaded when they're, you know, pitching all the time or trying to, to get money or whatever, get trying to get themselves shown in a thing. This fan expo was about having fun and getting the word out about your show in the most fun way possible. And I think it translates and I think it comes across and I think it gave the creators a chance to be relaxed and passionate about what they were doing because they weren't thinking about anything else. Right. 
They're just sort of peddling their wares. Yeah, and I think that's pretty cool. So, without further ado, here is the interview with the star of Hitman 101, Georgie DeBrus. So, introduce yourself to the people and let them know who you are and what show you're from. Hi, my name is uh, Georgie the Boris, and I played John Smith in Hitman 101. The star of Hitman 101. <laughs> the star of Hitman 101. How, let's talk about the con first. How has your experience been today? It's been amazing, surreal, fun. It, I, you know, six months ago I would never expect to be here promoting a show that I'm the star of and how, that I helped create, and it's just. An amazing place to be. Seeing you know people that love playing and love being in shows and watching shows, and, and it's a great community to be a part of. How has the reaction been from fans of Hitman 101 and people who've seen it before? It's been really good. Uh, we went to LA Web Fest. We were accepted there, and then we won nine awards and. It was kind of fun to see. Even the creator of the the web festival was pointing at me and say, "You're the hitman. I'm I'm scared of you. I'll be. I'll, don't don't shoot." It's it's, it's great. The, what we and Scott and me wanted to achieve has been already achieved. So whatever we get from here on is is you know an icing to the cake. And it's we we got our work out there that's all we want and we wanted to tell a story this the story that Scott wrote and created and it's it's amazing to see that people respond one way or the other now you guys won big at LA Web Fest yes we did and you're going to be representing LA Web Fest and all web series and Canada Canadian web series in France that that is indeed true we uh, we won one of the uh, 10 gold tickets to Marseille festival in France and uh, I, I hope that I can afford to go there in mid-October. And hopefully the, we, we will be well received uh, there as well. It's, I mean, our work is get, getting out there and we, we, we are showing people that we can do this with, with the little resources that we had. And all it takes is passion and love for, for what you do and a little bit of money too. A little bit of money. Yeah, you need that. <laughs> the response to the show online has been incredible. You know how much we like it. I'm, I'm very happy that you liked and it. And you may do a season two. You don't need to. The story is complete as it is. Yes. But you'd like to, we'd all like to see more. Do you think there's more story for your character given the way things ended? Not that we're going to spoil anything, but you know. Not wanting to spoil anything. If, we, if, if Scott decides that this, like, the brilliance of how he wrote the series is exactly that, that he wanted to create something that we will be able to shoot. It would be a complete story. We would put it out there. There would be no cliffhangers, no mysteries of what happened. But if we decided to do so, we would be able to go a million different directions with a storyline. Now, it's totally up to Scott, hopefully, and myself. I don't, I mean, I can see ways that my character could be brought back at different in a few different ways, but I don't think it would be the main character of season mm -hmm. two. I don't see a way, unless we go back to create of how I got to that point, how John Smith ended up becoming the hitman, the hitman. or going after. Yeah, what he you did. have to watch. You I, have to watch. You don't. You don't. I don't want to give away the spoilers. No spoilers. The cast has incredible chemistry together. Yeah. Did that translate from? having chemistry off screen did you guys get to know each other really well and realize that you clicked as a cast it, and then made that work uh well i got to read with everyone after i, I found out that well actually i didn't find out i, I started reading with all the uh, people that were auditioning for the other characters and i think that's what scott wanted at this callback that he he got me he wanted to see how i would play off with with the other actors and see the chemistry on camera and I mean the guys are so much fun if you w once you watch the series please watch the bloopers watch <laughs> the behind the scenes that's what all it's all about the, the fun of creating of being a part of something creative and, and enjoying what you do very complex character 
It is indeed. A lot going on with your character in this show. And a myriad of emotions you got to express. You were very calm, cool, and collected. And then there were tears, and there was anger, and there was romance, yeah. sort of. And you really got to, to, to play a very complex character that you don't normally see in web series. It's, it's an honor to hear that. I'm, I'm glad. I, that, that's, that's most, most part is, is the writing. Mm-hmm. I, I, when, I, when I read the entire script, I was actually the ending. You have to watch episode 12. It's oh, yeah. where it all comes together. All the questions that Scott creates, that uh, John Smith, you know, while, why I do what I do in the storyline gets resolved at the end. Completely. And I, I mean, it, it's a combination. Of, it was all on the page, but at the same time, I had a lot of influences from Leon the Professional. I had influences from the book itself, mm-hmm. which will you find out what book I'm talking about. In the, uh, I actually found the book online. I paid good bucks to yeah. buy it. It's a collective item. There's only a few thousand uh, on circulation because it got banned. And uh, I got some some stuff from that. And honestly, the rest came from finding the heart of John Smith and why he's doing what he's doing. And I brought to the table what I could with my uh, homework. And Scott had an entirely different point of view and the, <laughs> the both they both you know meshed into this what became John Smith which is essentially what we're trying to do now hitman 101 is something that everybody it seems in the cast and the crew feels very passionately about yeah. and I think that translated onto the screen into the music into the acting and the storytelling is that something that you want to do again in another web series or you would consider doing in another web series of course that's the I, Ever since I, I only started acting two and a half years ago, the first time that I walked into the room and I tried and found out what acting is about, I fell madly in love. I am passionate. I I am. I want to learn everything there is to know about filmmaking, and and hopefully that would make me an artist in what I do. For the time being, I'm just a student, and I'm trying to learn this craft and master it to the point where I'll. I'll you know, make it into an art where I'll just go and have fun, which I'm, you know, learning step by step. The Vancouver web series community is growing by leaps and bounds yeah. all the time. There are several web series here today. Standard Action is here. Uh, Four Villains is here. Four Villains is here. Right next, it's, it's nice that they give us a corner booth, so we're all there. And, and Joanna from St- Standard Action, I actually. You know, I, I auditioned to be on their show, and I've watched all their episodes. Four villains, I, I will watch because I—that's part of my homework—is to study other shows and study mm-hmm. other actors and learn from them and with them. What's next for Hitman 101? We are France, in France but uh, before France and after France, what we're trying to do is uh, is get our work out there. Is, and it's it's funny because I've talked to a lot of people about this, and it's it, sometimes it's ironic and, and, and funny, but at the same time very serious that the fact that the online communities, uh, Facebook, Twitter, they don't take the time to, to share. I mean, mm-hmm. they share small. I, I'm not I'm not being judgmental. I'm just saying that we're trying to find ways to entice people and, and show people that. With their one click, we we are getting more. Not that we want to get famous. It's just that we want to get our work out there, and hopefully get enough people interested in helping us. Maybe make a, se- a second season or another show. Another show or tell a story, whatever that story may be. It's we're trying to tell stories, and we love telling stories. So that's that's all we we're trying to do. You guys told a great story. You all should watch it. Then you should share it with your friends. That's the most important thing. And if you don't like it, you can always comment what it is that you didn't like so we can work on it and improve and and make ourselves better in that. Thank you. Thank you so much. So fun. Great guy. Fun, passionate interview. Great show. If you have not had a chance to watch Hitman 101 yet, 
you should do that. And you had their credits up just before the interview started. Look them up on Twitter, Facebook. They have a website, Bad Guy Films. And let them know in the comments and on Twitter what you think of their show because they really are open to hearing it. They want to interact with the fans. And we are about to plaster this wall behind us yes, with Hitman 101 uh, swag. We wore their t-shirts last week. It is a fantastic show. I liked it a lot. I think it's very interesting that they chose to make a, 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 a show. Wow. That they chose to make a first season that was completely contained. So if they couldn't raise money or find funding to do a second season, their story had been told. And I think that's really good. I think Scott, the, the show creator, is a brilliant guy. And I'm sure he's got a million other stories in him. And if it's anywhere near as good as Hitman 101, and look out for next year's Indie Intertube Awards because they already uh, co-shared or tied the uh, best original score in a web series. But it's amazing. Yeah. And that finale, it's one of those great web series where it got so much better as the season went along that their best episode was actually their finale. Yes. It's and just, that's where Everything rare. came together and to an absolute fantastic end. Absolutely. Now, I see Karen is back in the chat room. Yay. We did show the Breaking Point sneak peek. Um, I think Tori is going to have that biter in the ass. <laughs> don't see, don't fuck with somebody else's phone, especially no, your never exes. Ever. No, because and if it's your ex, you don't need to be deleting messages from their other ex. No, who they left you for before you cheated off of their phone. Yeah, that's just come on bad. now. Come on now. Okay. Um, should we show another trailer or should we do our new segment? I said, are you in the frame to do your segment, or do you want to... Hmm. Or do you want to get into the frame with the trailer? I'm kind of ready. I'm kind of ready. Are you? You know, we were talking earlier, and I'll introduce the segment in a sec. We were talking right. earlier about this great conversation that's been going on in the IWTV Facebook today. And uh, it was about, you know, at what point does a creator get out of the space if it's not financially working for them, if they're not getting the kind of support from the industry that they need or from brands or from networks or, or uh, the people higher up with money. Because, I mean, honestly, I think we all know that, that crowdfunding is not a viable business plan for <clears throat> the long run in this space, uh, nor is anything else that we currently have. And if you start kind of picking and choosing what you want to do. It's We haven't left upon anything that's viable for the whole space. But it got me thinking a lot about the mentality of creators in this space and a couple of other things. And that leads us, and it's, it's funny because the segment was going to start because I was bitching about a series called Wigs, a channel on YouTube coming up called Wigs that's partially funded by American Express. And then... I changed my mind and I'm not as mad about that anymore. Okay. Because it's male filmmakers making shows starring women, but it's female directors. It's got a hell of a cast. So hopefully we'll get permission to run their trailer before next week and we can show it to you. But this leads us to a new segment we will be calling The Spew. <laughs> the Spew. Oh. We usually tend to have a rant in every podcast and on this show too. So we're just going to make it into a damn segment all of its own called The Spew, where we will have the hurling of words for a few minutes. And this time The Spew is about the web series space and money and when is it right for you. I think, can we do this show indefinitely without finding some sponsors or advertisers? No. We can do it for the time being, for a number of reasons that you don't even care about. Um, but we love it, and we're passionate about it, and it's what we do all day long, and it's what we intend to continue doing. I think whether or not you quit this space is an intensely personal decision for every creator. You have to decide if what you are risking and what you are putting on the line is worth staying in there when there's no money in it right now, or the money hasn't trickled down that far. Um... Darren Strauss said something in the thread today that really affected me, and that is, it's time to start thinking about creating things for the web. Because the people with the money are the ones that realize this is a second screen, it's not a first screen, and there's a lot of things encapsulated in 
creating for this space that you won't necessarily get if you're not creating specifically for the web. If you're creating with your eye also on television or also on movies as well as the web space, or if you're using the web space as a step to television or movies. And that's the interactivity, the connection with you all the fans. That is something that traditional television has never been able to master and they still may not be able to. And it's something that movies don't really master. But the, with a web series, you have a direct connection to your fans. You can talk to them every day. You can know what they think right after they watch it. You can tweet with them. You can let them know. The social media and the mobile screens is also something that you, that you don't get from a lot of, especially scripted television, scripted dramas in particular. And I think it's something that we as creators need to understand. But the most important thing over and above all of that is that we have got to stand up and talk about what is missing from the space, what works and what doesn't as far as events go and what it's going to take to, to make this space a viable entertainment option all of its own because it's happening. It's happening. And pretty soon, like you said, it's all going to be, you guys aren't going to care where the content was created. You're just going to all be watching it on a connected TV or on your laptop or whatever screen you choose to make your, your first screen. And I think that we have to decide that we want to fight for our place at the table. Like I have said a thousand times and I will continue to say it. And this is no disrespect to the, to the creators who feel that they, that this isn't the right medium for them to tell their stories or they cannot risk it anymore and they need to have a solid job and they've got kids and a family and a roof over their heads is important and so is food and making a living wage. But we have got to respect this space, embrace it. We have to speak up, we have to speak out and we have to love what we're doing because they're not coming and looking for us. Those people with the big money are looking for Katie Couric and Tom Hanks and Kiefer Sutherland, Madonna, Lady Gaga, and all of those people, they're not looking for April and Shad and Cricket. They're not looking for Karen. They're not looking for Hitman 101. We have to do it because we love it. We have to do it because we want to fight for that space. This is a new frontier. It is. And there's going to be some growing pains and it is going to hurt. And Greg Storm kind of said it when he said, normally you can be the groundbreaker and then somebody else comes in to build the building. But right now, all the people with the money are sitting back having coffee until the building gets built. And this time, we're going to have to be the groundbreakers and the ones who build the building. And then they'll come in. We have to prove that it can be done. We, as creators in this space, have more faith in our audience than the people with the money do. And we understand our audiences more than the people with the money do. What we need to explain to them is who our audiences are and what you guys really want to see. I don't think you all want to see a lot of the crap that's out there right now. And all we're trying to do is help you find what it is you want. Now, the last part of this that really is the spew, stop creating web series entertainment that was intended to be on TV, that the first choice is TV or that was created for a movie. Your audiences don't, you think your audiences can't tell, we can. We can usually tell if something was intended to be a movie and was cut down. I think the best way to do that would be to do it after. Hold on to all of your footage and then recut it as a pilot later, but do it as a web series first so it makes sense. But that's just me. Like I said, it's the spew. It doesn't always have to make sense. Uh, what I want to see is more creators standing up and fighting for this space, fighting for our place at the table, elbowing for room, being the ones who said, hey, we were here first. You don't get to come in and just roll over us and push us out of the way. Our audiences want scripted drama. Our audiences want good comedy. Our audiences don't all want farting cats. But I will say this, there is something we can learn from the YouTubers. And that's interaction. And that's understanding your audience. I think we can all learn from each other. We can all help each other. And most of all, we can listen to our audience, understand what they want and give it to them. And that's the spew for today. <laughs> it's good. Whatever. It didn't make any sense, but there, there it you have it. It makes sense. It makes absolute sense. Oops. My original bit of the spew what got kind of screwed up because then I watched the damn trailer for Jan on Wigs. And I watched the sizzle reel and I'm like, shit balls. There's a lot going on on this show. But hey. But hey. 
You never know. No but. No but. And see, Karen, Karen, you really kind of hit it. It, it, is, it. it really isn't about making money, but we do need to be able to pay people, and we need to spend, you know, a lot of time. I think it's funny that the article came out on YouTube saying that the people who are doing wigs, or even actors and crew, are making as little as $15 an hour per day per diem. And, uh... Can I put this view back up? No. <laughs> and people were like, but there there are people at In-N-Out that make more than that. There are people at BC Ferries that make more than that. But you know what? If somebody paid me $15 an hour... I would be quite happy. For me happy. to do what I'm doing right now, I would be so thrilled because I could still provide you guys with good coverage of the internet, of the web series space. We could do all kinds of stuff like you would not believe. And I would be happy doing it. And you know what the most important thing is when you're doing your job is that you love it. Is that you can find a space inside yourself where you're happy and you love what you're doing. We love what we're doing. Is it hard? Oh my God. Yes, it's hard. And there are times that we are almost at each other's throats. But it's always, always worth it. Everything in this space is worth it. And if you can look, if you look back at the, the amount of work that you're doing in your own jobs or creators in this space, if you're looking back at the amount of work that you're doing and the amount of money and attention that's, that's coming in and support that's coming in, and you can literally look at yourself in the mirror and say, it's not worth it. This isn't what I want to be doing. This isn't good for me. It's not going to work. And then maybe it isn't the right space for you. But it might be the right space for eight other creators out of ten. It's a tough decision. It's an intensely personal decision. And now let's get back to the fun. Okay. <laughs> now that we've depressed everybody with this. Oh, view. no. No depressing. No. The dog is sleep, though. The dog is sleep. Cricket is hurt. <laughs> she, took a, she took a spill. Poor Cricket. She took a spill. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. She just fell asleep in my hand. The Look poor at. Roo. She took a spill yesterday. We took her to the park. It's the oh. first time we saw sunshine in a very long time. And we took her to the park, and she walked a long way, and she tried to climb out underneath the fence and threw her knee out. And then when she was coming home, she was so tired, she missed a step. Damn near broke her leg. <laughs> so she's through. She's just kind of sitting in everyone's lap. She's getting carried up and down the stairs today. Yeah, she was carried up and down the stairs today, and, and she's just not doing well. This she loves all really of you guys, a, but... a happy woot kind of a thing to keep... I don't know why the lights keep tired. working out. She's tired. She's very, very tired. Um... Now, before we get to the Eric Layden interview, and I know some of you have tuned in just for that, Eric Layden, what? who is the voice of Cole McGrath in Infamous 2, the voice of Ellis in Left for Dead 2, and the character of Jamie on AMC's The Killing, which just finished its second, they just finished shooting their second season, um, we want to show you another of three trailers. And the first one is for a show called Malice. And I will put their uh, YouTube channel in the chat room. It's got a great trailer. It's a relatively new show. And you should definitely check it out. It looks like it's really going to be interesting. An interesting take on a classic. So here's the trailer for Malice. Living in the noise house? Our mom inherited it. Our home now. The creepy one? There's weird stuff here, Alice, right? Around this house? Alice, we need you. And there's Ghost Kid. Ghost Kid's for real? Dad was worried, but wasn't he telling us? Mom's gone. You stay here. Abby! You know something. You've always known. I haven't seen shit like that in 30 some years. No! Dad's gone. What? Where's my sister? What were you doing there alone with a machine gun? Am I now a terrorist? Badass, Alice. It's not every day one goes down the rabbit hole. Save me. I told you what's been happening with me. The hell I've been going through up here. She's coming. What is it? What does it want? You. Alice. It wants you. Ah! I have touched the face of evil. I am Alice. I hate you, Alice. I know. I hate you too. 
You're crazy. They've already got a lot of episodes up, so they do go. have you have a few episodes up. I think they have um, six episodes up right now. I want that hat. I figured you would, but it's an interesting take on a classic, is it not? Yes, it is. Malice Down Under. I like it. I think their website looks great. There, have you seen her with her little? Yeah, with her gun and her bunny and the hat and the shirt. Yeah. Yeah, I like it a lot. I think it's going to be an interesting show. Um, we have not gotten completely caught up with the episodes, but you can count on a review of Malice Down Under on this coming Wednesday's podcast. Because it's a show right up our alley, I think. Yeah? Yes. Yeah? And you want her hat. Yes. Even though you have the flipping the Bird shirt on. I do. I still want her hat. For those of you who are fans of Jaws. You have to. <laughs> really? Cows. 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 It's very special. <laughs> I was so happy when I found this shirt. I was like, ooh. <laughs> and it's interesting to see young people doing such a great trailer and a great show, being mm -hmm. involved in a great show. Kind of reminds me of Mind's Eye mm. and Ruby Sky P.I., which is really cool to see um, young people getting involved. And you really don't ever want to extinguish that kind of passion or spark that, that comes up. I think it's amazing. Um, to see that. You know what I mean? I think you do. Hey, Eric Layden <laughs> was at Fan Expo Vancouver, and I, like Amanda did when Jennifer Hale, and we have that interview coming up next week, um, like she did when she got to meet Jennifer Hale and interview Jennifer Hale, who is the voice, of course, of Commander Shepard in Mass Effect, Fem Shep in Mass Effect. I kind of did a major geek out when, uh, Eric Layden was announced to be part of this event because not only is the killing on AMC a fantastic show and his character Jamie is um, complex and um, deeply flawed, but two video games that I have and play, he is in. He is the voice of Ellis, the uh, redneck in Left 4 Dead 2, for those of you who have played it. But most iconically, and the one that means the most to me, is he is the voice of of Cole McGrath in Infamous 2, which to me was the better of the two uh, games. Eric Layden has a really interesting take on doing motion capture and voiceovers for video games because when he did Left 4 Dead 2, he just did voice work kind of in a booth by himself and has never met a lot of the cast members that were in Left 4 Dead 2. And in Infamous 2, not only did they do mocap, but they also did ensemble recording. Mm -hmm. So it's a completely different thing. And for those of you who have played Infamous 2, you know that the emotional connection between the characters in that game is pretty deep and pretty layered and very complex. And it's a great, great story. So I couldn't wait to meet him. I do have to say we had a little thrill, but we didn't know he was walking up behind us when we were standing in the electric playground area. And he actually tapped a man on the shoulder and said, excuse me. And it, it was kind of like you go, Cole? And he's like, what? Because his speaking voice is... um. Yeah. A lot like Cole McGrath. <laughs> so it kind of like weirds you out when you're sitting and talking to him and you're like, hee hee, it's Cole. So, um. <laughs> yes, that's exactly it. Yeah. I know, I know what you mean. And I do know I there it. are a lot of the Killing fans out there too. So, hey, um, Eric Layden is on Indie Intertube right now. Uh, we've got audio now. All right. We're here with Eric Layden, who most of you have heard us talk about as the voice of Cole McGrath in Infamous 2. It's also in The Killing. That's right. And uh, Ellis in Left Ellis. 4 Dead 2. That's right. That was my favorite, I think. Yeah, over Cole? I don't know. Cole actually, Cole and I have, uh, he shares a good little piece of my heart. It's been a lot of time with Cole, so. But Ellis is, uh, you know, I know people that are like Ellis. I'm from Texas. <laughs> I know that are so, like to, uh, she's from Texas. Uh, yeah, too. I'm from Houston. So uh, I, uh, I went to school with some people that are very Ellis like. So maybe that's why I relate to them a little bit. Yeah, we're, I'm from the South too. So we get it. Nice. I loved Ellis. Nice. Um, after your experience of recording Left 4 Dead and then doing Infamous 2 with some ensemble recording, mm -hmm. do you feel that with story based games that that helps you hit those emotional beats? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the things, you know, when I did Left 4 Dead 2, I didn't meet anybody, uh, any of the other actors I didn't meet. Um, 
And with Infamous 2, when I spoke with them about it after I after I you know began, got the job, mm -hmm. you know we that was one thing that we really wanted to enhance in the second game was was character development, um, relationships between these two characters because I felt like my relationship with Quo and my relationship um, with uh, Nika's character what's Nika's character Nix uh, Nix um, I just know him by actress's names. Um, but uh, you know, it, it it is the game. You know, I exactly. have to. You know, you have to be able to believe that these people can relate. And also, even when Cole is doing, you know, the evil Cole, that it's justified. And I think that that's so important. So when we were all in the booth together, and Caleb, who plays Zeke, by the way, is one of awesome. my favorite people. Um, but you know, for us all to be in the booth, looking at each other, working together, is a huge, huge thing. It gives you an opportunity to do overlapping conversations, too, which sounds so much more natural when you're together. Right, and they can do that, of course, with uh, you know, with the with the board. But it's it's better when we're actually working off of each other. Yeah. Good call or bad call? Uh, bad call is probably more fun to play, but good call is 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 my favorite. I think Mine the too. ending. You know, I gotta say though, the ending. It, the ending is sad. Bittersweet. Yeah, it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet. We we were we had a sad day when we shot that in the I motion bet. capture studio. So yeah, it was, it was the epitome of a bittersweet video game. It ending. was. Yeah. But a great story. It is, it, and that's that's the most important thing, you know, it, it, the integrity of the story. So it's was, it was great. Third question, last okay. question. If you could voice any other character, male or female, in Infamous Ooh. Two, who would it be? It's a good question because I love, you know, I, I love Zeke. I think he's fun, but Caleb does such a good job, and I've played characters similar to Zeke. I think Nix. <laughs> nice. Nix is so different. I like Nix. She is. That's a good yeah. answer. Yeah. That's a good answer. Thank but you. I could never touch what Nika does. Nika's amazing. She's an incredible, incredible vocal talent. But um, I totally shipped. And so. Cole and quote. Yeah. Oh, you did. I totally <laughs> shipped them hard. Yeah. Yeah, it's like nice. that's just that whole. Well, Dawn and I are very good friends. Teaching her how to use the powers and all that. You yeah, guys, the chemistry was just there. Yeah, well, we're we're very close, and uh, Dawn and I knew each other well before Infamous. We worked together on other things, so that's cool. I think that's why our chemistry works so well. How's the killing going? Killing's going great. Killing's going great. I'm with my co-star here, Billy, and uh, we're we wrap at the end of the week. Nice. Yeah, back Black to LA. Favor. I love it. Love the city. It's great. Yeah, having cool. a good time. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Thank you to uh, Victor Lucas from Electric Playground and Mediatonic PR, as well as Eric Layden himself, for making the time to talk to us uh, that day at the Vancouver Fan Expo. It was quite a thrill, and you know, it, it really does boil down to something we've talked a lot about on this show. Story, story, story. And video games have really evolved to a point where story is as important as it is in any narrative format. Um, whether it be a television show, a web series, uh, a book, or a game. And Infamous 2 really had... The first Infamous had a great story, too, but Infamous 2 picked it up and moved it in such a way as it, be it, it became epic in that second game. And I believe that a true transmedia immersive experience is where entertainment is headed, where it's going to be a book, a game, a comic book, a graphic novel, a web series, a movie, and a television show all in one universe. We kind of saw that a bit with Receiver, uh, Heroes of the North. Uh, Once You Leave is also doing that a little bit. But then when you bring in the console games, and we're about to see the real expansion of that with the new Halo web series. Yeah, brought to you by Microsoft. Brought to you by, surprisingly enough, Microsoft. Um, it's called... Uh... Oh, shit, what's the name of it? I forgot now. <laughs> Something Dawn? Unto the Dawn or yeah. something like that. Anyway, it's... And I'm a Halo girl. I really should know this. Um, that was bad. I wasn't yeah. even prepped for that. I was like, I shouldn't have to remember. Sure, but no. you're going to see a bit of this with Halo because there are Halo books. There are Halo graphic novels. There is the Halo game. And now there is going to be a live-action Halo web series that is... Forward Unto Dawn. Marketed by, created by Microsoft with their full blessing called Forward Into Dawn. Plus you have the wet, not the other web series, Red vs. Blue and um, Halo Helljumper, which are also based in this universe. Um, I think that's the future of storytelling. Will it be for everybody? No. And will every creator be able to do it? No. no. Because a lot of people are still going to want to lean back experience when they're watching TV. 
Um, I do sometimes just want to sit back and watch TV and not have to think or participate or grab my computer. But I will say that at least 75 to 85% of the time I watch TV with my trusty laptop in my lap. Yep. Because I want to look up something. I want to participate in the show. I want to tweet about it. I want to do something, take notes or whatever. And I do that. So I think that there's going to be those of us who really want to see a truly immersive experience. And I would totally play Infamous 1 and 2 again, or Dead Space 1 and 2 again, if I could also, which there is a Dead Space book, read the Dead Space book, watch the Dead Space movie, interact with a motion comic online, and then play the game again. You know, that kind of immersive where you put people into the story is really becoming an interesting concept that more and more creators are starting to do. And if you want to get a, an idea of what that looks like, I would say one of the best examples is Receiver, RCVR. Look that web series up. It really is a good example of that. They have an alternate reality game. They have the web series. And when you, that's like really going through the rabbit hole because they, it, it's just got some amazing stuff that go along with it. And on the television side, here in Canada, where we're broadcasting from right now, there is a show that is about to debut on Showcase this month, May, the 23rd, I believe, or the 26th, called Continuum. It's being done by Rogers and Shaw and on Showcase, and it is going to be a true transmedia experience. They have already launched their ARG, and it is going to be an immersive experience for the audience. And next week on the show, as we get closer to launch, we are going to be showing you um, an interview with two of their cast members, Lexa Doig and Victor Webster, as well as an interview with their head writer, Sarah Cooper. So there's some interesting stuff coming mm -hmm. about Continuum because it is a transmedia project. Now, you asked if there would be a web series. Yes. And he said he didn't know. Not yet. Not yet, but they are working on the full trans... Oh, cricket, can you not hit the tripod? Um, transmedia element. See, look, she just... And it was really it interesting to crazy. be at this panel at Fan Expo Vancouver for Continuum where the entire cast and creators and everybody was involved. And when she asked them about a web series, have him immediately know what she was talking about and immediately go and use the term transmedia and just run with it. Yeah. And I want to tell you, because you can find the video on YouTube, and we didn't have cameras rolling uh, at the time that this happened, that they actually made the Meet the Continuum cast and crew panel a transmedia experience because when you were sitting, after we had done all our interviews and the crowd came in, we were all sitting in the audience and the creator introduced the cast and everybody came out and as they're explaining what the show is about and kind of moving into uh, the Q&A portion of it, um, you heard a voice in the audience say, liar. Mm-hmm. You're a liar. It's, it's, there's a lot of them up on YouTube. There are several videos of this up on YouTube. Uh, the group is called Liberate. They're the ARG element. They are the resistance element of Continuum, this, the show. And they were like, you're a liar, you're a liar. And, and she stood up and said, you know, you, you've got to get out from the tyranny of your government. And they're lying to you. And liberate. And then they were, liberate. And then some of the people on the audience, on the panel, liberate. And they're pulling them back down. It was very That's much very cool. a transmedia experience just being in the panel to see how that was going to interact. And then for the rest of the weekend, they had liberate people walking around handing yeah. out brochures. So it's, it's really very cool to see some traditional television, although I wouldn't really look at what's being created by Showcase, i.e. Lost Girl and Continuum, as traditional TV. I look at them more as indie TV because they don't have U.S. distributors. They don't right. have foreign distributors yet. Um, look for that show. We'll be talking a lot about it on here. Hey, damn, look at the audience. I know. Woo! Anyway. Hey, y'all. More trailers. Hello, new visitors. We've got another trailer to show you. It's for cute comedy. Oh, we're doing a cute comedy. Called Lesson from My Early 20s. And we were just contacted by the creator, and I checked it out, and I think it is, it is definitely worth sharing and showing with you guys. And listen, there's a reason why that we want to make sure that you're paying attention to these trailers, because you know what? May Sweeps is upon us. And you know what that means? End of the season. Prime time. Going to be done. Going to be heading back into reruns and you're going to get shitty, shitty mid-season replacements. And what it really means 
is that you're going to have time to watch more web series. And you can watch them on your tablet or your phone when you're at the beach or you're on the bus headed to the beach. Or you're going to the lake or you're sitting around with your friends or you just have five minutes before you head out of the house in the morning. You're going to have time to watch these shows. So, you know. Especially on a Sunday. Take notes. Because you can download the mobile app for Stickam and watch That's us. That's right. You can download the mobile app for Stickam. You can watch us and you can bookmark the web series as you're going along because we know that you all type crazy fast. So the first one that we showed you was Malice Down Under. And now we're going to show you Lessons from My Early 20s. I came up with this metaphor once that life was like a train. And since coming up with that, I've concluded that I have been on some pretty shitty train rides. That have made me really late for things. Including life. You almost done there, babe? Babe, do you think this skirt is too short? No. But you know what? I didn't care about success when I was younger. Because I was in my early 20s, and typically that's not the kind of stuff you think about. When I was 20, I definitely wasn't preoccupied with success. I was preoccupied with the guy in my poetry class. When I was 21, I was doing great for a while, but then I gave it up for a relationship that made me unhappy. When I was 22, I just wanted to do whatever I wanted regardless of the consequences. Now I resent that carefreeness, but I wouldn't want it back, at least, not totally. I mean, uh. Everything was changing when I was 23. Firstly, I made the mistake of graduating college. Then there was that recession thing, which sucks and still does. When I was 24, I finally got a real job. At least, I'd gotten to be an expert on making it sound that way. I'm a digital content supervisor. But life isn't all about success after all. And in these times, you surely have to find different ways to define yourself. I think it looks cute and empowering and fun. Don't you? <laughs> And see, now everyone's kind of going, God, what did I do when I was... <laughs> Snap. When I was 21, I was interviewing musicians for uh, freelance music magazines. Wow. Actually, I was doing that when I was 19. Take a wild guess who the first person I ever interviewed was. <laughs> who was the first person you ever interviewed? Pat Benatar. <laughs> And I say that as a massive fan of Pat Benatar. Oh. But I got the chance to interview everybody from Pat Benatar to Barbara Mandrell to Prince to Stevie Nicks. Uh, right up until the most recent musician interview I did was a few years back and it was Melissa Farrick. The Judds. Yeah, it was an interesting uh, freelance career. I'm trying to remember... <laughs> if you could ever find a copy of Gig Magazine, my interview with Pat Benatar appeared in that magazine back in the. <laughs> back in the <laughs> We won't talk about when. Um, so that was lessons from my early 20s. Now I see that Venice Riley has now popped into the room. Yes, with a new so, computer and Beats headphones that we apparently sound freaking fantastic. So then on. she will definitely hear us say, Thank you, Brenda White. Thank you. For providing us the largest part of the title that we for our new web series that we are now in pre production for. Let's say that she just right got up all ears. close in there. Got up real close to it. It says, Thank you, Brenda White, because the new web series will be called Indie Interstate, a love letter to America. Um, moving on <laughs> from her uh, Next. from her uh, personal spot in our credits, we have one more trailer to show for you guys today. Before we do that, I want to let you know some of what's coming in the web series world. What? Drifter is still raising money. Got to go check it out. They're on Mobcaster. Mm -hmm. Am I saying that right? Um, you definitely need to go and check that out. Donate to Drifter. It's going to be a great project starring the fantastic, wonderful, talented, passionate Norma Ray of the web series world, Julianne Emery. With Jeff Koenig, Al Thompson, uh, Rachel Hip Flores, Emma Caulfield, God knows who else in this thing. It's going to be amazing. Um, but there are some upcoming web series coming your way starting this month that you definitely don't want to miss as you're doing your stuff this summer. 
when your primetime shows are in hiatus is the time you want to check these out, especially now. Uh, new episodes of Breaking Point are going up on JTS TV. You need to check them out too because Continuum, the web series, just had their season one finale. Ragged Isle is launching season two this month. Fumbling Through the Pieces is in the midst of filming season two. Divanity has completed their funding for season three and will be shooting in June or July, I believe. There is so much happening right now in the world of web series. So Don't much once stuff you that leave, is coming. It's supposed to, to start once back you up. leave is going to be starting up pretty damn soon, and I can't wait. I try not to talk about that too much with you, though, because I get too excited. And then I don't know what the hell is going on. Um, You're going to lose it. Yes. Next. Um, They do have, <laughs> like Karen just said, four more days to donate to Divanity. So don't stop. So don't stop. You never know what they can do with some But they extra did reach money. their goal, and we're so uh, proud of Divanity. We can't wait to see. Because they've got, like, Charlene Tilton in season three. Yes. It just coincides with that whole that new Dallas reboot thing that's... That's, <laughs> that's happening. Um... So there's lots of stuff going on in the web series world. And yes. if you if you want to know what's going on, all you got to do is tune into our podcast. We have a two-hour podcast every Wednesday on Block Talk Radio. We have interviews. We have reviews. We have updates on the news. And that is the best way that you can find out what is new, what is going on, what's happening. Oh, and don't forget we're about Streaming Garage and Jane Espenson with Husbands and Behind the Scenes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jane Espenson has hired Steaming Garage to shoot their behind the scenes this season. And every Sunday we will be showing you trailers, interviews. We've got some featured episodes coming up about standard action, Hitman 101, Ragged Isle, The Vanity, and God knows who else. You never know. Well, who is going to turn up on this show? You just don't. Four villains could come running in here and just start breaking shit up any minute. Right. And because somebody asked for it, let's just show our info nest because... Check it out. If I can get it up there. Woo! There it is. If you have a show you want us to check out, if you have a show that you think that we've missed and you're a fan of it and you want us to see it, if you want to yell at us because we suck, if you have some diet ideas, um, <laughs> if really? you want to help Cricket out with her little leg and you want to tell us about doggy massage, we don't care. Anything you want to say to us, you can do it through those portals. On Tweet us. Send us email. Check out our website. There's news going up on the website every day. Just check us out. Yeah. Yeah. There was a bunch of web series at uh, Calgary Fan Expo this past weekend, and I cannot wait to get Clutch and Ooh. Heroes of the North and Standard Action back on the show to tell us how Fan Expo went in Calgary. I really think that, that the conventions like this are a way that web series creators can get out there and interact and mingle with fans and create some real excitement. So I'm hoping to see more of that. Plus, who doesn't love going to a really, really good convention? We're geeks, so we're all about it. One more trailer. I This show is, again, right up our alley. I apologize to those of you who aren't really all about the horror or the thrillingness. This <laughs> we one gave is you a called... cute one so that... that, that... To bracket. This one is called Carpe Noctum, and it's a great trailer. Check it out. You guys all set? Did anyone see you leave with us?
Doesn't that look cool? And Nate's right. That's an awesome trailer. Awesome poster. Yeah. Hey, and apparently Karen has a deaf actor in the next episode. That'll be cool. That will be cool. That'll be very awesome. Yeah, I agree, Brenda. That's a really cool trailer. Um, what was I going to say? I totally just lost. Thank you to every one of the 16,000 people that are watching us right now. Yeah, because that number For those is of awesome. you who have a show and you want to maybe perhaps uh, advertise on either the podcast or the or this show, hey, email us. Let us know. We've got, we're working on those rates and we will work with you and your tiny smaller budgets because we know your web series creators. Um, this is always fun and we had fun today. Even though we, we had technical difficulties right up until the moment of the show, we were able to make it happen. And hopefully we'll really have Really need to get that Indiegogo campaign going. What's... I just got a weird message. So hopefully... Hopefully... What? Hopefully all that work that I did today will not be for naught because it just said it can't load it. But it pulled it back up when I clicked it again. Okay. So. Everybody, all at once, cross your fingers. Because we have new end credits, too. And Shad's a little nervous. As you can see. I hope they were. Once again, it was fun. Thank you to all of you for watching today. We wouldn't be here without all of you, creators and fans alike. And we just hope that you can find a show that you like and that is fun to watch and that you can share with your friends through us. Seriously, that's all it's about. We just want more people to watch web series and be aware of what's going on so that we can all move together into the future of entertainment. Independent entertainment. So until Wednesday... Woo! Bye, everybody. Have Thanks. fun. Oh. The internet. It's not something that you just dump something on. It's not a big truck. It's a series of tubes. The other day, got internet was sent by my staff at 10 o'clock in the morning on Friday. I got...